Now you know from Young Stubble Slit that if you fire light through these two gaps, then light will diffract and interfere and create an interference pattern on a screen because the waves interact. This happens because we know light acts like a wave and diffraction is one of the main pieces of evidence for the wave nature of light. But we know that light can act like a particle as well from the photoelectric effect. But what about actual particles like electrons? If they just acted like particles, should we see diffraction with particles if they're not like waves at all? Well, no, we shouldn't, but we do. Problem is, is that we only see it with very, very small gaps. Talking about the size of an atom, and you're talking about 10 to the minus 12 meters. Talking about a picometer. So we don't see diffraction happening with electrons when we fire them through a gap that's a tenth of a millimeter or whatever it is for a diffraction grating or Young's double slit. It needs to be much, much smaller than that. So we fire electrons at a metal foil. And then we have a screen over here. Now then, if our screen looked like this, and we were looking end on here, what would we expect to see? We'd expect to see just a dot like that if no diffraction happened at all. But what we actually see is this. We see concentric circles. We have a circular diffraction pattern. If this is a phosphorescent screen, then it will light up when electrons hit it. So we get a bright fringe, dark fringe, bright fringe, dark fringe, bright fringe, dark fringe, and a bright fringe. So just like with light going through a gap, when electrons go through a metal foil, a very thin metal foil, we actually see diffraction happening. So this proves that particles also act like waves. That's kind of weird, isn't it? And this is because the electrons, as they go past the atoms, they're getting diffracted around the atoms. So if they can be diffracted and they can cause interference patterns, that must mean the particles must have a wavelength. And it was Prince Louis de Broglie, or Broglie that first suggested this in the 1920s. And so we call the wavelength for a particle the matter wavelength, or de Broglie wavelength. For waves, we know that V equals F lambda. We can't use that here because in this case, how fast a particle is traveling doesn't affect frequency and wavelength in the same way. It's equals to Planck's constant divided by the momentum of a particle. Momentum being mass times velocity. The only way to get a meaningful wavelength is with very light particle. So that's why we see diffraction with electrons, but don't see it with bigger particles. Technically, even you have a de Broglie wavelength, but you have such a massive mass that the wavelength ends up being so small, basically don't diffract at all. But theoretically, you walk through a doorway and you are going to diffract a tiny bit. Also, we don't want them going too fast. Because if we have a very fast speed, then we're going to make the wavelength very, very small. Too small to do anything with it. Too small to see any meaningful diffraction. So when we fire electrons at our metal foil, we want them going fairly fast, that they go through, but not too fast, because otherwise the wavelength's gonna to be too small. Now, one thing that's gonna be useful for some people, but not everybody, is to know how to find out the speed. What is the speed from an electron gun? Now, when we have an electron gun, we have a cathode. That's where the, where the electrons come from. And then we have an anode with a hole in the middle. And these electrons are going to jump off the cathode and they're going to be accelerated through the gap in the middle of the anode like that. And this cathode and this anode, they are connected by, they have a PD between them, V. This is what we call the accelerating voltage, or accelerating PD. We can call that VA for short. Now we know that voltage is energy per unit charge. So that means that energy is voltage times charge. In this case, it's gonna be equals to the charge. That's E, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times the accelerating voltage. What kind of energy is given to the electron? Well, that's gonna be kinetic energy. So ultimately, to find out the speed, we say this, the energy of an electron
after being accelerated is equals to half mv squared. All we have to do then is rearrange to find v equals. We'll do that one step at a time, times the whole thing by two equals mv squared. So that means that two eva divided by m gives you v squared, and then square root the whole lot, we end up with two lots of the electron energy divided by the mass of an electron. Once you've got that, you can pop this back into here to find out the wavelength of said electron. So that's electron diffraction and de Broglie wavelengths. Hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you think I've missed anything or have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you next time.